Okay, you ready? Good morning. Today, the topic that we're going to be presenting to you today is social media and mental health. Specifically, the group question we decided to focus on is what are the most effective solutions to reduce the risk of mental health issues caused by social media? What's the problem? Overall, we're going to talk now about the overall problem with social media and mental health. As you can see by this infographic here, 3 billion people use uh, are active social media users, which is about 40% of the population. So, and on average, it is found that users spend about two hours a day, two hours a day on social media. Um, and recent studies have found that excessive use of social media can increase the risk of developing mental health issues. Also, so now we're going to be going into the more specific mental health issues and how those affect, uh, and how those are affected by social media. So one such issue is depression. A 2040 study by the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine surveyed about 1,787 adults found that participants who checked social media most frequently throughout the week had 2.7 times uh, the likelihood of depression compared to those who check least frequently. Social media use has also been linked to anxiety. Dr. Larry Rosen, a psychology professor, has found that our obsessive behavior on social media can be attributed to a hormone called cortisol. After we put down our phones for a while, our brains will signal the adrenal gland to produce a burst of a hormone called cortisol, which triggers the same fight or flight response that we experience when we encounter danger. However, in this case, it would make us anxious about the possible new content or updates on our social media platforms that we could be missing. Therefore, um, eventually, the urge will become so overpowering that eventually we will succumb to it and open the app again to relieve the anxiety. Those are the two main mental health issues caused by social media. Now we'll be going into more specific solutions on how to um, change, uh, not to have acquire mental health issues um, affected by social media. The first being users should change their own um, social media habit uh, individually. So the first part of this is taking non-social media breaks. Now a lot of people will take breaks um, with on social media and first off according to a study done by Business Today, 13% of total workplace productivity is lost from these social media breaks being used in the workplace. If this social media was used in a, like break was used in a more productive way, uh, such as uh, meditation or walks or reading, productivity in the workplace may actually be increased rather than lost. Repla replacing these breaks, <coughs> okay, another main solution is apps. Uh, downloading apps that will help you reduce your screen time or also in just manage it in general. Uh, these apps will allow you to manage your screen time by showing you how much time you've used today or um, how much time you spend on your phone or computer in general. This one specifically is called Moment, it's this one right here. Uh, the, another one will block your social media for a certain amount of time, allowing you to be more social with your friends and family for off time, it's this one. The last, the last solution uh, is turning off notifications. Uh, the Georgetown Psychological Association recommends that you turn off notifications on your phone in order to reduce anxiety caused by constantly checking your phone when you get a notification. However, it could also go the other way because once you turn off your notifications, it feels like uh, you're missing something if you don't feel the notifications, so you could be checking your phone even more. Uh, so overall, these solutions are highly effective. However, they do require initiative from the individual to make a change in their daily habits, and which is one limitation of these solutions. So another solution is having Apple and other such smartphone companies implement settings and tools in order to combat the rising negative mental health side effects to the usage of their products. Okay. So one such solution is ha that Apple has created is, Grace, uh, is Grayscale, a feature with a possible answer to the reduction of social media on one's phone. Grayscale is a setting that enables you to turn all the colors on your screen to black and white. Um, the purpose of the setting is to, I quote, make screens a little less stimulating, end quote. Um, this has been reviewed to be remarkably effective, and again, I quote, um, has ease phone checking. 
This would have a very real effect on people as a person has an innate reaction to color. For example, when you look at red, it does increase your heart rate since it is a stimulating color. With the replacement of such stimulating colors with black and white ones, um, a steady decline in social media uh, usage should be seen. Um, However, Ms. McClevey, chief executive of marketing firm of Salient MG, revealed that it took her around 40 minutes to figure out how to use the setting. Um, this is the principal issue when facing the creation of such features by smartphone companies. Apple themselves start to lose if features such as grayscale are effective, as they would definitely be making that desired user-friendly um, product less attractive. This is clearly not beneficial to such companies who thrive on the clients enjoying that, uh, using their products. Okay. Finally, another feature provided by Apple is parental control setting. Uh, this setting provides the parents the ability to restrict certain apps, movies, websites, and more from their child. In addition, due to the recent open letter by two influential shareholders, um, Apple has also promised to make more robust changes in the future to the parental control setting. This, however, is quite an extreme method as you can't simply um, regulate the apps and searches but prevent them altogether. The third option would be for social media companies themselves to change their business model and software. The current business model of social media companies is based on advertising. This means that the more time you spend on their platforms, the more money they generate from ad revenue. As a result, social media companies have developed specific app features that are designed to be addictive. For example, we have the bottomless pit features which provide an infinite stream of new content without users having to make a conscious, de a conscious decision about whether they would like it or not. For example, we have the pull to refresh function, the continuous scroll format of your news feeds, and auto-playing videos. We also, um, bleh, sorry, <laughs> social media companies also use virtual rewards um, to get users hooked. For example, Instagram has their like notifications. However, what you may not know is that Instagram sometimes delays these um, like notifications, waiting for the number of likes to accumulate before sending all their notifications in a big burst. Snapchat streaks will reward users with emojis depending on how many days in a row two users have Snapchatted each other. Therefore, social media companies should be putting public health into the forefront of their business model and their software. Facebook is a recent example. In January 2018, Facebook announced that they were going to have a dramatic change to their newsfeed algorithm. Now, instead of aiming to maximize the time users spend on Facebook, the new algorithm will prioritize posts um, from friends and family, while reducing the content that um, me publishers, media companies, and brands post. This doesn't exactly change the design of the addictive app features on the platform. However, it does attempt to help make users help users make the most of their time by reducing the amount of viral content on news feeds. People are more likely to spend less time on Facebook. However, um, each app session would be more meaningful and more worthwhile. Others suggest a subscription model, which would offset the losses in ad revenue and not be predatory. In a subscription model, there is no need to maximize the amount of time the user spends on an app for every session. Roger McNamee, an early investor in Facebook and a former, a former business mentor to Zuckerberg, said that if Facebook charged only $3.50 a month in the USA alone, um, the company would be generating more revenue than what they're making today. Of course, there are cons to this approach. For example, it directly harms the business of social media companies, and also business models can't be axed overnight, and reforms will take time, and governments are most likely to have to step in. E furthermore, the subscription model may fail, since um, users could rebel and everything could return back to normal. So what is the best way forward? We've decided that the best way forward is a mix of all three perspectives. But, ultra, but ultimately, it is up to the customers of social media companies to start an on, online reform. Increased public education about social media's harm to mental health means that a greater public awareness can spark outrage and protest, 
and therefore all three solutions would eventually be implemented. So in the end, the solution to the issue is to social media's negative effect on mental health depends on how motivated and uh, determined users are to follow through on holding themselves and tech giants accountable uh, for the digital illness created. Thank you. <laughs> you see Luke's face over here. Like up until the last <laughs> second. You made it. All right. Um, okay. I have like a random yeah. burst of blah, blah. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, let's do the oral defense. Um, so Cosima, can you talk about an argument or something that was in one of the other two papers that impacted your thinking? Um, an argument that uh, Tini made in her paper about how um, if we were, if social media companies were to change anything in their, uh, the way they use uh, in their products, um, it would greatly impact, it would be too extreme for, uh, uh, for the future since we are so reliant on technology that um, it really impacted me uh, in, uh, in how they think. Okay. Um, and Tingyi, can you talk about something that the group had to decide to, that was in one of the reports that the group decided you had to leave it out of the team presentation? Oh God, there's so many. <laughs> <laughs> you just pick one. <laughs> uh, like, for, for, we've been making last minute cuts up until like a minute before we started presenting. Like we, we were about to, have, we had a, originally had a longer introduction um, that set more context to our problem and provided more evidence as to like the different studies that um, have been conducted on social media's effect on mental health. And then we we found that we have to we really only have time for one example per mental health um, issue, and we also have to cut an additional mental health issue that we were going to discuss. Okay. All right. Um, Alice, is there something uh, that you learned in this group project or from the team argument that's made you think differently um, than you did before the project? Specifically about the issue or just in general? It can be either. Can okay, just give me a specific. specific. Um, okay, so I guess, uh, I think something that has made me think differently is more about, um, sorry. <laughs> Or uh, could, yeah. Is it about the issue? I guess, yeah, more about the issue. It's just more finding we, as the research continued. And I think in my paper, I didn't find as much context about the issue and how big it was because I was more focused on my solutions. But then reading Tingyi's and Cosmos that had more context, I realized kind of how big the problem was and how uh, much how it really had affected because I hadn't done that in my research as much mm -hmm. um, because I was really focused on the solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it was really eye-opening to see like, that social media really does have a huge effect on mental health. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, thank you.